War Against Gotham, Chapter 6, Alex's Nightmare. Fourteen days ago, the world had survived the invasion of the parties. Now the world was trying to move on from the event. During the invasion, our heroes and villains had to work together, but after they saved the world, they continued with their own journeys. Alex walked into the lounge area and found Dick and Alfred talking about strategies. Hey, you still trying to figure out how to take out Dr. Dead? Alex asked. Trying being the key word there, yes. Dick muttered. It seems like Dr. Dead has hidden himself away for the last two weeks. Seems rather strange, doesn't it? One can only hope they have given up. Alfred said with a sigh. He stood up and walked over to the trolley cart and poured two cups of tea and presented them to Alex and Dick. Guessing Lance and Rory haven't had any luck on their scouting missions, huh? Alex said. They are to report back in ten minutes, but you shouldn't worry about that, shouldn't you? Be in school? Dick barked. Really? Alex moaned. Robin is blacklisted. Doesn't mean Alex has to be. School. Move it. Now. Dick snapped back. Alex rolled his eyes and stormed out of the room. He got himself dressed in his uniform and grabbed his bag. He then headed for school. It had reopened the day before. Some of the building had been closed off due to the damage caused by the putty invasion. Alex walked into class and sat there and the teacher scowled at him. Nice of you to join us, the teacher barked. Sorry, it's been a wild few days, Alex replied. The whole world has had a wild few days, Alex, and we still managed to get in school on time, the teacher replied. Alex's class all laughed at the teacher's remark. Then he got on with the teaching, and Alex sat there more concerned about Dr. Dead than his schoolwork. He looked at the board as the teacher was writing on it, but was finding it hard to focus. The words blurred together. The words started to move, shift, and dance across the board. Alex suddenly felt rather hot and bothered. He stood up and tried to walk towards the door. He needed fresh air, when suddenly he fell to the floor and passed out. Arsenal and Hawkeye ran across a rooftop and jumped over to the next one. They stopped and Arsenal pointed out a building that was in front of them. You see that? Orson asked. Yeah, they're all holed up on that roof. Out of sight, out of mind. Hawkeye stated. They must be working for dead. Or his companions. We take them out, then we thin the herd, so to speak. Arsenal noted. Both the heroes aimed their arrows and shot them. Their arrows hit the door on the opposite side of the building. On the arrows was a connected zip wire. They used their bows to ride across the zip line and landed in the middle of the group of thugs. Holy crap, it's the archers! One of the thugs called out. Both Arsenal and Hawkeye aimed their arrows and shot them. Arsenal shot an electrical arrow which hit a thug and electrocuted him. Hawkeye shot an arrow that doubled as a flashbang. As it hit the thug in the shoulder, the arrow flashed a blinding light which blinded the surrounding thugs. Arsenal swung at one of the thugs with his bow and smacked one of them in the leg, knocking him onto the ground. Then he bent down and punched the thug in the face. Hawkeye ran up to one of the thugs, kicked off him, and then he aimed his bow up and swung it down with all his might, swinging it into the thug's head, knocking him out. They both ran at the final thug. Arsenal swung high and Hawkeye swung low. The thug was hit in the face and the leg at the same time and dropped to the floor with a hard thud. Both of them stood there with several unconscious bodies laying around them. (sighs) Ha... Now what? Hawkeye asked. Check their coats and pockets. See if we can find any information or cell phones. Hopefully it leads to something. Arsenal told him. They both started searching pockets when suddenly Hawkeye felt incredibly dizzy. He stood up and the lights going from the opposite buildings started dancing around him. Arsenal walked up to him and said something but whatever he said didn't come out as English as Hawkeye dropped his bow and then dropped to his knees as he passed out. Did you hear about that new podcast? What new podcast, Asu? It's called the Tiger Nexus Podcast, run by Ty Tiger. Hold on. I know that name. He's the guy behind Tiger Tales on YouTube, right? Yep, that's right. And now he's launched his own podcast where he interviews content creators and nerds of all kinds. No way. That sounds so cool. What's the name of the podcast again? The Tiger Nexus Podcast. 
You can find it on all major podcast platforms. Hold up. He's had Cosplay Dude 637 on there? That's amazing! I know, right? He's also interviewed A Crown, Mark the Red Corners Ranger, and many others. I am totally subscribing to the Tiger Nexus podcast. I don't want to miss anything. Tune into the Tiger Nexus podcast by Ty Tiger for fascinating interviews with your favorite content creators and nerds. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Don't miss out. Robin and Hawkeye both opened their eyes and looked around the dark, empty basement they were in. They realised they were both back to back and hanging off chains from the ceiling. Hey man, are you okay? Robin grunted. Yeah, how did we get here? Hawkeye asked back. I do not know. We must have been poisoned or something, Robin stated. Fear toxin? Hawkeye guessed. I wasn't in a nightmare, was you? Robin asked confused. Nah, you got a good point, Hawkeye sighed. You must have a keen eye. Scarecrow's voice hissed when, within the darkness, Scarecrow emerged. How did you get us? Hawkeye barked. Oh, please. Getting you was the easy part. The hard part is finding the right dosage. I do not know why, but you both seem to be quite immune to the novice level of my fear toxin. Scarecrow hissed back. He then revealed his gauntlet filled with fear toxins, the needles extending off his fingertips. Let us go, Robin barked. The others will have to be here soon to save us. You know that, don't you? Hawkeye yelled. <laughs> Please, you are never getting out of here. Scarecrow hissed amusingly. Then Scarecrow grabbed Robin by the arm. He held up his needles, ready to plunge them into Robin's chest, when suddenly the wall exploded, and Nightwing, Black Canary, and Arsenal jumped into the basement. Your terror ends here, Scarecrow. Nightwing called out. I will get the boys. You two stop Scarecrow. Black Canary ordered. She ran to the two tied-up heroes and screamed. The padlock shattered due to the impact of the sonic waves, and both boys dropped to the ground. Black Canary helped them to their feet. Good God, we'll be glad to see you, Hawkeye muttered. Same. Next time don't get caught by the terrorizing freak of nature over there, okay? Black Canary said sternly, but with a slight hint of relief. We'll keep that in mind. Robin muttered as he rubbed his wrists. Arsenal and Nightwing circled around Scarecrow. It's over, freak. Arsenal barked. Keep your distance. One prick from those needles, and you're living your worst fear. Nightwing warned Arsenal. Yes, keep your distance. Scarecrow muttered amusingly. Then Arsenal aimed his arrow and shot it. Scarecrow waved his hand, deflecting it with his needles. Nightwing triggered his extremist sticks and rolled forward. As he jumped to his feet, he hit Scarecrow several times before spinning around and kicking the villain in the head, knocking him off his feet. Black Canary led the boys through the hole that they came through and led them out of the basement and finally ran outside. They ran out onto a forestry lane. Robin turned to see an old wooden house that they just emerged from. Where the hell are we? Robin asked. Some old house on the outskirts of Gotham. Black Canary stated. Nightwing and Arsenal followed them outside with Scarecrow in handcuffs. Let's get you boys home. Nightwing said. Once the Gotham police had Scarecrow in their custody, the team headed back to Wayne Manor. Everyone climbed out of their suits and Dick walked over to the back computer. As he started typing away, Alex walked over to him. Hey, thanks for the save. I don't even remember how I got caught by Scarecrow. Alex shuffled. Well, Scarecrow only goes after easy targets. Dick muttered. Ouch, man, it wasn't my fault. Alex snapped back. Well, maybe if you went to school on time, you would be okay. Dick roared. Then Dick's hand shifted into blades and started swinging them at Alex. They reminded him of the blades that Freddy Krueger would wear. He jumped back, dodging the attack. He then ran off, running away from Dick, as he ran into Alfred. Alfred, help! Dick's on completely nuts! Somehow, he's Freddy Krueger! Alex cried out. 
Well, he would do. Would a failure like yourself? Alfred muttered. Alfred's face moulded into a shark, and he leant forward and snapped his jaws at Alex. Alex jumped back and swung his fist, punching the shark in the chest. Then he saw Dick Kruger running towards them. He grabbed Jaws Pennyworth by the tie and shoved him back, making him stumble into Dick Kruger. Then Alex ran out of the back cave and entered the Wayne Manor building. He ran into the lounge area and found Lance tied to a chair, an apple placed on his head. Roy was across the room aiming his arrow. He fired it and hit the apple. It was a direct hit. Lance sat there laughing over and over. Oh god, it's all a dream, it's all a dream, Scarecrow's fear of toxins got into me, it's all a dream, Alex told himself. He ran outside of the mansion and fell into complete darkness. Then it flashed to white, then back to black, then back to white. He kept falling and falling with nothing to grab onto. He screamed, or at least tried to scream, as no sound escaped his lips. Then suddenly, Alex opened his eyes, and he was slouched on the couch. The 50-inch TV was showing scenes from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Alex rubbed his eyes. He remembered falling asleep. He promised Lance he would catch up on the movie franchise, but his body must have had other plans. He sat up and scratched his stiff neck. Then Dino walked in, holding a glass of water. So you woke up finally. Here, drink something. Dinah said, sitting next to him, and handing him a glass of water. He took a sip and exhaled slowly. Oh, thanks, he sighed. Did you have a bad dream? You know you shouldn't be watching horror movies this late. It's gone three in the morning. Dinah replied. I know. Hey, what are you doing up? Alex asked her. Suddenly, she looked at Alex with a seductive look. She ran the tip of her fingernails up his leg, and then she shifted her leg across Alex's lap. Before Alex could say anything, Dinah pushed Alex into the couch cushions and kissed him. Robin woke up. His hands were tied, and he was dangling from the ceiling. Scarecrow stood inches from his face. You keep fighting my dosage, boy wonder. And it's getting annoying. Scarecrow hissed. Bitch, please, I can handle anything you got, Robin barked. Scarecrow then jabbed him in the stomach with his needles once again, the fear toxin in his gauntlet depleting as it was pumped into Robin. Robin tried to speak, but his eyes rolled in the back of his head, and once again he entered Scarecrow's nightmare fueled dreams. In reality, Robin was laid on a metal table, unconscious. Scarecrow and his henchmen all stood around the unconscious hero. Hey, boss, is he still alive? One thug asked. Yes, it's a dose that makes you think you're winning. Or makes you think you beat the system. And then throws in a random wrench in the works. I call it detrimental whiskey. Scarecrow explained. Now what do we do? Another thug asked. Get Dr. Dead on the phone. Tell him I have one of Gotham's heroes here. For a sleepover. <laughs> Scarecrow said with a mean, wicked chuckle. Scarecrow bent down and stroked Robin's hair. He watched as the unconscious hero's eyes moved under his eyelids. Scarecrow was generally curious on what was going on in Robin's nightmares. <laughs>